So how's everyone today? Good, how are you? Everyone okay? Everyone okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's go to the new chapter. All right, so this chapter is a very, um, I don't know how to say. It's a chapter that needs us to have four months to talk about it. This particular chapter, software development. Um, yeah, I don't know how we're gonna cover this in just one week. Um, but we're going to try to, you know, just give you what you need, right, to remember for the assignment and for the CompTIA exam, because this kind of chapter, in fact, the whole course, you need to do it, you know, in a proper classroom, right? Uh, but we're going to give you some examples when it comes to this chapter. So this chapter is about software development. It includes things like programming and programming code, right? And if you look at the summary, if we go down to the summary here, you're gonna see that the summary, where's the summary here? Give me one second. All right, so where is it? All right, so you notice the summary here, right? It talks about, uh, let me get my highlighter out. It says, uh, know the five notational systems, right? Know the five fundamental data types. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, Stuff in this chapter that's just about coding. Has anyone has anyone done any kind of coding before, like programming, coding? Anybody? Lane, have you done any coding before? I trying to build a program and writing all this crazy code. Lane. Yeah. Can you guys hear me, or am I just talking to myself? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we hear you. Yes. So, have you done any kind of coding? Do you know what coding yeah. is when you are writing yeah. code to create a program? Yes. Mm. So, uh, Arch, you you've done some coding before? Yes. What what languages? What coding languages? JavaScript, Java, C, C. JavaScript, Java. C plus plus. HTML. How about HTML? Yes. HTML. What what a PHP or MySQL? Uh, no, my I know PHP, but not uh, some. You know PHP, uh, not SQL. Uh, yes, SQL I know. Okay. Any any anyone else done any pro, any programming before? Type some code and stuff like that. I know C language. C language? Yes. What have you done in C? C and the data structures also, I know. In C, I used to do some programs, like uh, to take input and take some addition or uh, like all math into the C. Okay. Take input um, and produce output. Okay, input and output. May, have you done any coding before? Any programming? No. No. Uh, Alex, any programming? Coding? I tried to learn by myself some uh, Java, but I was not successful. Not, what do you mean not successful? I didn't learn, uh, I mean, 
enough so I could uh, say, oh, now I know what Java is about? Okay, well, like I said, this chapter is, um, you know, it's going to be quite interesting to talk about. And we're going to try to talk about as much as possible so that you, you know, have a, you know, just a basic understanding or basic knowledge of some programming terms, right? So let's, first of all, I want to show you guys something here. I'm going to put in the chat. Oh, where's the chat? Here. All right. Uh, give me one second. Okay, I'm going to put the link here in the chat. So, not there, right here. So look in the chat and then click on that link. And then when you click on that link, um, Kaush, I want you to share your screen with us. This link you sent us is about uh, being eligible to vote? Yes. So, Kaush, when you look at this, this program or this website, what, what do you think it, what's it asking you to do? What's it about? Not secure. What? It's not secure, first of all. It's not secure? Yeah. Okay, well, don't worry about the security right now. Uh, but when you go to the program itself, you know, to the website, you know, what is it? You know, what's the, what's the, what's the website about? Voting eligibility checking website page. Say that again. It's a voting eligibility checking page. Okay. So, so let's do this, right? Put any name you like in there and just put any year. It doesn't have to be your year. You can write any name you like and put any year. It, well, it has to be just a year, like, you know, 1980, 2000, just a year. You can put any, any year you like there. And then let's test it. All right, so, all right, so Kaush just put in, what, what year did you put in? I don't know, just put mm -hmm. in some year. 1987, <laughs> it's not really. Okay, like so, that. all right, so Kaush put in 1987, and the program says you're 34 years old. Okay, put in a different year. Put in your name again and a different year. Because, okay, go ahead. Yeah, just put a different year. You got to put your name and then year, and then you click check eligibility. Okay, 21 year old. It says you can still vote. You can vote, right? Well, put in something much younger. Let's see if it, let's see if it works. Put in like 12 years old. You know, I know Lynn is like 12 years old. So let's put in something for Lynn. 2019. 2019, right? <laughs> All right. So sad face, uh, 11 years old. Okay. So here's my question. Um, Kyle, here's my question. How does this program know? You know, like when you put in the year, how does it do the math? You know, it's like it knows your name. It does, it does the calculation of the age based on what you put in there. How does it know that, uh, Couch? Uh, yes, maybe the calculation, like a formula. They, when they, I put at, at the year, then it automatically um, uh, consider it's a greater than 18 yes it is 18 plus it could would be uh, it, eligible and uh, less than 18 not eligible it's like a... okay so lynn uh -huh. so who did i mean so who designed this program like that i mean or is it just magic who, who oh. designed it like that uh, did somebody design it or it's just like you know how did it happen um, I think it's a 
CPU work? The CPU? Uh, because the, they have to count, right? When you put the numbers, uh, uh, they they have a count to uh, how, 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 how many years. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, how how does this program, okay, Kalsh, can you put in, put in the name again and put in an age? Don't click here, just put something, just put a, put a year there. Okay, so don't click here. Mm -hmm. So my question is, um, when you click check eligibility, how does it know, you know, how does it do all this calculation and then come out with your age? This Lane, you said it's the, the difference Go ahead, between the, uh, the year you put uh, as uh, the year you were born and the present date. So there's some calculation going on in the background? Right. And there are uh, so, if statements. Uh, if uh, the number, the result is uh, over 18, uh, it will be a, a one uh, smile face. And if it's uh, under 18, it should be another smile face. Oh, it's sad face. Yeah. OK, and you, man? Yes. All right, so do you, I mean, how is this, do you know how this program works? It comes up with a different face. If you're younger than 18, a different face, it calculates your age. How does it do that? Do you know that? Um, no, I don't know. It's, uh, I know it's uh, eligible for 18 plus old. You must be 18 to be bought. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, this program that Couch is putting in high information, who is doing all the calculation to know that that age is 18 or less? How, how does it work? Computer that. Computer. Is it just, uh, is it just it's magic? A, is it just magic? <laughs> uh, it's a uh, it's, um, software input uh, uh, the computer. The program. Uh, a program, some program settings there. Some kind of program settings. Settings. Or Arch, what do you think? It's, uh, it's a code written by a programmer by uh, checking that um, uh, below 18 will be um, not eligible for to vote and above 18 will be eligible to uh, vote. Like that, the programmer will code that program. Okay, let me ask May. May, what do you think? How does this program work? Is it magic? No. Or is it in the cloud? Is it in the cloud? No. <laughs> you know, it's in the cloud. No, I think just like I say, the program, uh, the programmer, so they set up like this. They added the code, like set up the yes. plus some, yeah, addition. So. so a programmer designed it to work like that. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. And what do you think? A programmer made it like that? Yes, yes. There is a code behind the screen saying that uh, the condition, if that is condition, whatever we put, uh, giving the input should be greater than eight. If it is greater than eight, uh, that uh, a message will be like, uh, you are eligible. If it is less than 18, uh, it will say you are not eligible. All, All right, Kaush, code. Kaush, click on that button again, check eligibility. Oh, All right, so yes. now it tells you. Uh, Banjo, I, I have Yes, go ahead. In this, sure. uh, cart this cartoon change stand, uh, when it's not eligible, the cartoon is sorry mode. When it's eligible, the cartoon is just happy mode. <laughs> <laughs> emoji, a right? happy emoji. emoji yeah. Happy emoji. So, so you guys are saying that somebody designed it like that, right? Yes. With the code. Yes. Okay, Couch. Uh, Couch, click on the screen and right click, right click on the screen. And you, no, no, just move to a different space. Yeah, right there. Right click and click on view page source. Okay. Uh, can you like increase the size like control on your keyboard control plus plus right there. Okay, so 
Let's see a few things here, if we can see anything at all. Uh, first of all, uh, Kaush, if you move your mouse to the very top in the address bar. Okay, look at the extension, right? The extension of that file, the last digits there, or the last, you know, the extension, dot PHP. Oh, yes. Right? So that is a high-level programming language, okay? Now, if you notice here, uh, we can see a few things. I mean, we can't see everything. Like, we can't see all the uh, programming, but we can see a little bit here. Uh, we can see the, if you scroll down to the bottom, couch. I think we can see the picture, right? We can see the picture that was used on line, 20, on line 28. Classic, classic. On line 28, if you scroll to the right, Yeah, scroll, scroll to the right. There's a bottom, there's a bottom horizontal scroll. There, there you go. All right. So if you click on that link, that says no, no, you're going, to, you're, no, you're going too far. Go back, back, back. Okay, that link that says emoji happy. Click on that. Click on that um, that uh, that oh, web yeah. address. Yeah, click there. This link. Oh, so so that's the happy emoji, right? The happy emoji is designed to kind of be a part of the program. Okay? It's a part of the program. Okay, let's go back to that code. All right, now what else? Can we see? Can we find the sad, uh, the sad emoji, the the address for that? Well, that is not. That's not really showing up. It's kind of. Because of the kind of programming that was done, uh, but you can see online, online 22, right? Online 20. Now you can see all this code. You see all this. Everything you're seeing here is code, HTML code, right? Some of this code you absolutely don't even know what it is about, right? Couch. Some of you have. Some of you may know what it is. Couch has. Couch knows what this is. But some of you may have no idea, but coding is how you make programs and how they eventually work. And you guys are right. A programmer has to design the program and basically give it instructions. Now, uh, I'm going to show you the, the actual code of that program. So, Couch, go back to that website. Yeah, I'm going to show you the actual code that was used uh, to build this program. So let me share my screen again. All right, so here's the code that was used to build the program right here. You guys see that? You might know, you're probably not going to understand what it is. It's not really important that you understand right now. But if you look here, there's a lot of code and all this here, you see HTML, all this code here, they're all, everything is designed to make the program appear like it appears. For example, uh, the part about if the age is less than 18 or greater than 18, now you may not understand the program, but let me just try to explain if possible, right? For example, right here, see, uh, okay, there are things that we call, in programming, we call some things variables, right? So you can see that right here, um, actually, let's see, let's look at here, on line 32, right? Arch, do you see what's on line 32? Yes. So there's a variable called current yes. this is the current year 2021 right yes. minus the user's age so how do we know the user's age well here is the here is the here is where you put in the user's age right here it says enter your name and enter the year you were born 
right? That is right here. You enter your name here and enter the year you were born, right? Something like that. So when you create a program, right, the program, you don't see all the code, just like, you know, just a regular user just sees the program. They don't see all the code in the back. But the program is a whole set of instructions that tells the program how to work. Like the colors, for example, if you look at the background, the background image, the background image here is a flag. You see the background image? Now, when you look at the code, this is that flag right here. This is it. Uh, where is it? It is right here. It is right here. It's a link that points to the flag. You see that link there? And if you compare that link to the address up here, you can see that it's the same address. Right? So a programmer has to put all this stuff together to make a program. It might be a program on a website. It might be an app on your phone. It might be a software on your computer. But it's all coding and uh, a lot of programming involved. Right? So like I said, you're not going to understand this program. Maybe Arch may understand a little bit. But... You guys are not going to understand it. Don't worry about understanding it. When you do the exam, you're not going to see a lot of code there. Like, here's the code. What does it mean? You're not going to see that. But there's some terms that we have to kind of, um, you know, know or try to know, right, about programming and about coding, okay? So you're going to see things like, for example, you see – on line 17, and Juman, on line 17, yes. you can see right here it says Virgin Eligibility Check. Yes. Okay? okay? And here is, and you see this H3 and H3 right here, right? Yes. See, everything has, everything has a symbol, like a less, like this character here. This, what's the name of that character? Do you know the name of that character there? This uh, then. Less than, exactly. So the less than character, so there's a less than, there's a greater than. Yes. Right? So when you have a less than and a greater than, and you write something in there, uh, what, do you call, what do you call that? That is called what? Um, it's, too it's called a tag. tag. Right? It's called a tag. Right? It, uh, actually, it's called the HTML. HTML, right? So you have a lot of programming languages, right? Programming languages. Languages. Uh, you have HTML, you have PHP, you have Java, you have Java, JavaScript, uh, you have C, uh, C sharp, right? C plus plus, like this. You have um, SQL. There's so many programming languages, but they all they all work together to make a program or a software or some app on your phone. The designer or the programmer has to. It's like programming is about instructions. For example, if I go back to this code for a minute. On line 32, it says that when the user enters their age, right, minus that age, right, minus from the current year. Kaos, you see that? Yes. You minus the age that the user enters from the current year, right? Now, like I said, you may not understand how it works, but that's exactly what happens, okay? Um, so if you minus that, you're going, to, you're going to get the user's age, okay? Now, look at what happens here. Uh, Alex, you said something about if. So right here it says that, uh, actually, not, not, not that part, this part here, this part. So, uh, for example, current, we call that a variable, a variable. It's like, you know, you guys know what variables are. You did it in school. So a variable, if you have four plus Four plus, let's see, 
plus 3 equals 12, right? No. Now you say, now you, or you say 4 plus um, N equals 12, right? Then you say, what is N, N. right? You guys, are, I mean, you guys are, I'm sure we've all done this in school at, at a point, right? So N here is a variable, right? It's like in algebra or something. When you were, um, I don't know, when did you do this? When you were like 10 years old or 12 years old, right? I think uh, in sixth grade. In sixth grade? Okay. Yeah. So, so this is like a variable and that variable can change, okay? So in programming, we have what we call a variable. Basically, a variable, variables store values. It's like you give them, it's storing a value. Anyway, let's move on. So right here, this current is like, it's going to be current year, right? 2021 minus whatever year you put in. And so, Carol, if you look at this part on like 32, 38, it says if, the, if current is greater than the legal voting age, so we know that the legal voting age is 18, okay? So current is 2021 minus, you know, the year of your birth. And I'm sure you guys are probably confused, but hopefully not. I like, is it making some kind of sense or not? It doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense. Right? Lynn, how does this sound to you? Like, I hate this. Can we end the class? Lynn, anyway. don't say that. Oh, no. Lynn didn't say that. Okay, so right here you can see it says, if current is greater than the legal voting age, then it's gonna say all the stuff here. It's gonna say, hello, blah, blah, blah. You are whatever the age is, years old, you can vote. Then here is the happy, here's the happy emoji here, right? It says else, if it's a different age, if it's less than, it's gonna say, sorry, uh, you are not eligible to vote. It's gonna show you a very sad emoji, right? So all this stuff put together, May, does it make some sense to you? Maybe not. Yes. A little bit. So all this stuff put together, right, is the idea of software development. A programmer has to design it, right, use all this code, right, use pictures, use code, use all kinds of instructions, all kinds of variables, all kinds of numbers. For example, May, you notice that if you have a number, there is no semicolon around it. I mean, sorry, there is no quotation mark around it. You know, like right here, there's no quotation mark around numbers, right? You just write the numbers directly. But when you have, uh, when you have you know, like words or names, you have quotation marks around them, okay? Well, there's something we call that we refer to that as data types. Data types. For example, what does data type mean? So if I say, uh, if I say, I don't know, John minus 12. May, what's the answer to that? John minus 12. <laughs> we can't say anything. <laughs> I don't know. What you can't say? Yes. <laughs> John, we can't. Okay. We can't. There's a okay. Okay. John, what is the number for John? <laughs> we can't uh, okay. do that. What if we say winter uh, times 4 minus 20, 2009? Makes sense. What's the answer to that? <laughs> winter times 4 minus 20, 2009. The answer is that this computer is broken. 
<laughs> the computer is broken. The computer is broken. So what we're saying here is the data types are not, they don't match, they're not compatible. A data type can be a number, data types, uh, numbers. A number is a data type. A date is a data type. Um, currency, that is money, right, is a, is a data type. Strings, what are strings? Strings are like words, names, addresses, things like those are strings. Okay. These are all, all data types. Exact, uh, what's his names, right? These are all data types. So if you want to use numbers, you can say four times two. If you want to have a date, you can say 20, 2001 minus uh, maybe, I don't know, 1978, right? You use data, those are data types. The data type determines what you can do with the data, okay? Um, for example, if we go back to the program, uh, right here, it asks you to enter your name. And it, what, what would happen, uh, Lane, if I put in my name here, let's say I say uh, Professor Banjo, right? And then I say uh, my, and right here, I type, um, I type November. Don't take. Is no. it going to work? No. 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 So it's the wrong, it's the wrong data type because I'm sure if I click on check eligibility, <laughs> it says you are 20, 2021 years old. The program got to totally broken, right? Like, it doesn't know what that is. It's, uh, it's not working. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's a glitch. So the data type there is completely wrong. If I write uh, Peter, right? It's not going to work. The data type is wrong. So, so data types have to match. If you're dealing with money, currency, then you say, you know, that is dollars um, or, you know, whatever like that. If you're dealing with strings, then you have somebody's name, you know, something like that. Um, uh, you know, Charlie, you have names or addresses, okay? So th that's part of programming. When you design a program, the data types, you know, you have to know, well, what goes in here? I mean, like right here, if I put in, let's say I put in uh, 2009, okay? And then here I put in uh, 2003, okay? Now what's gonna happen? Check eligibility. So 2009, <laughs> you're 18 years old, but it thinks that that's my name. Your name is 2009, right? So programs are this now. If this pro this program can be designed, right, to block, you know, like if you don't type an actual name to say, oh, there's an error there, something like that, right? You can design the program. Just like if we go to um, Gmail. So say you want to create a Gmail account. <laughs> Okay, Gmail account, create Gmail account. All right, so when you want to create a Gmail account, it's going to say, put in your first name. This, this program or this website was designed by somebody, right? It was designed. So let's say I just like, uh, I'm just going to say my name is X, my last name is V, my username is C. Uh, that's all I want to do there. Well, the program was designed to tell you, sorry, your username must be between six and 30 characters. Uh, do you see that? Yes. It's not magic. You know, it's not created by magic. It was designed to work like that. So if I do six characters like C, 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 three, four, five, six. Okay. Now it tells me it changes the message. That username is taken, right? Suppose I add something else like uh, QQQ. That's a crazy username, but uh oh, that's taken too. 
Suppose I add two, two, two. Ah, well, that's the worst username ever, <laughs> right? But that could be the, so somebody designed this program. Now, if I just say uh, submit, next, it says I have to enter a password, right? So all that stuff there was created in the, all these text boxes. I've got to put in the correct data in these text boxes. And then the Gmail program is going to check with a database. You see, there's a database in the background that checks that information. Maybe that username has been used before. What's a database? A database looks like looks something like this, like an Excel spreadsheet, right? In a database, you might have first name. Uh, let me just increase that a little bit here. All right, you might have a column for first name, last name. You might have phone. You might have, uh, what else can you have in database? You have, what, like what? What else can you have? Date of birth. Oh, DOB, right? Address. What else can you have in the database? Address. What? Address. Email, email address. Email, exactly. Username, mm -hmm. password, stuff like that, right? So if a user, if you sign up on the site and you say, um, you know, Frank, last name is Johns, phone is 617, blah, 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 blah. Date of birth is, you know, whatever it is, 1-1-2000. One, one, Address is blah, 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 blah. Email. J blah, 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 at gmail.com and then you choose a username, something like that, right? So every time somebody else creates an account, right, couch, the information goes in the database. Every time you create an account, right, you know, if you have many accounts, everybody's name is going to go into the database. Now, when you're, going to, when you're going to sign into your Gmail account, right, after you create the account and you go and sign in, well, that website is going to connect to the database to see if your information is correct. So if your name is Frank Johns and your username is correct, then it's going to allow you to go through. It's all programming. It's all designed by a programmer. Now, if you have programming skills, programmers make a lot of money. Do you know how much programmers make? Arch, what do programmers make? Let's check. Let's go to um, bls.gov. Couch, do you know what programmers make? Yeah. Okay. A, a programmer, wait, a programmer, wait, a programmer and somebody that works at McDonald's, who makes more money? Who makes more money? Obviously, programmer. Oh, really? Okay. Well, let's check. Let's check this website here. Uh, BLS.gov is the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Everything about jobs, what kind of job, how much you get paid, it's all there. So let's do computer programmer, right? Let's see what they, what they make here. Okay, so every kind of job or occupation on this website will give you the, you know, the outlook. So let's look at programmers here. So in 2020, just last year, well, this is the average pay. Programmers were earning $42 an hour and 89000 like 90000 per year. Does anybody here earn 90000 per year? <laughs> Anybody here? No. I'll quit my job. I'll come out and work for your company. Right? So it tells you, you know, what you have to do to be a programmer, right? Uh, computer programmers write and test code that allows computer applications and software to function. That's what we just talked about, right? Programmers design and write the code that makes the programs and software and apps to work, right? 
Um, how do you become a programmer? Well, you have a bachelor's degree, and then you maybe an associate's degree, and they leave, you know, you've got to learn programming languages. Like we said, a lot of these programs here, uh, generally you probably have to know a lot of these programs, right? Um, that was the average, the median pay uh, last year, 89,000. Uh, how about the jobs? Say, so let's see how many jobs are available there. Number of jobs two years ago was about 213,000. So there's a lot of work in the computer programming industry, right? A lot of work and a lot of money. They make a lot of money too, okay? So you can always use this website, any kind of a career or job you're looking for, they give you an idea of, you know, what that job or career is like. Okay. So with that background, so let's get into the book and see what the book, maybe some of the things in the book might make a bit more sense to you. Uh, we'll see. So right here you see, it talks about the fundamental data types, right? He says uh, right here, understand what? Understand the difference between compiled and interpreted languages. We're going to kind of talk about that. He talks about the different, um, be able to give some examples of interpreted languages, HTML, XML, PHP, JavaScript, some of the things we talked about, right? Some of those different program programming languages, they're all there, right? Uh, he talks about, I uh, know the difference between types of identifiers, okay? All right, so... Let's, let's try to get into it a little bit here and see what we can learn, all right? You don't have to know about programming, but just some, you know, just an idea. You know, just some ideas of, for example, right here, uh, what we just looked at here, like all this here, it says if, if, else, those are called conditionals, like conditions. If the age is, if the year, is somebody like outside? I'm getting so much feedback here. All right. So, some of, so this if else, some of these things are called, like when you have if else, statements uh, in code, they're called conditions. Conditions, conditions, right? Conditions that must be met for a program to run, right? Some of the conditions might be based on age, based on the time of the day, based on, you know, a whole lot of different factors, right? Maybe you click a button. If you click on something, something else is gonna happen, right? When you look at your phone, you have a lot of programs or a lot of apps on your phone that do different things, right? Uh, let's see. All right, so when you look at a phone, and let's see the different apps on the phone, you can see you have WhatsApp, okay? WhatsApp is there. You have Facebook. You have Twitter. These are all apps that are designed by programmers, right? Even the phone, even the phone itself, right? The phone itself. For example, Microsoft Word, uh, let's see, Microsoft Word, the Microsoft Word program, uh, let's, let's go here. Let me check that for you. Microsoft. Okay, let me show you that information. Uh, there's some information that uh, kind of tells us that Microsoft Word, like the code, right? The code behind Microsoft Word 
is like millions and millions of lines of code, right? So it's very, it's, programs can be very complex. Let me just check it out if I see that again. Let me see if I find it for you guys. Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll see that later. But, you know, I mean, for example, the program that I showed you guys, the website, you know, the lines of code are just about maybe 52 lines of code. Some more complex programs might have a lot more code, like just a lot of code, okay? So, so let's go here. Let's go to question one and see what it's about. Uh, Anu, let's start with you, and then we'll kind of explore the book to see what it's talking about. So question one. Anu, are you there? This is for you. Oh, okay. I just muted. Which of the following numbers is written in hexadecimal format? Okay, so let's so what does hexadecimal format mean? Hexadecimal, right? Well, here is one example I can give you of what hexadecimal is. Hexadecimal so, is 16. Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. So hexadecimal, hexadecimal. All right. Okay, Anna, tell me some colors that you know. Colors, the names of colors. Uh, red, blue. Red, blue. Orange. Orange. Yellow. Yellow. Green. Green. Purple. Anybody, anybody can help. Purple. Pink. Pink. White. White. Brown. Gray. What? Gray. Green is over. What? Oh. Black. I didn't hear. Oh, black. Brown. Okay. Okay, here's a question for you guys, right? Um, you see this folder here? This folder at the bottom of my screen? Yes. May. May. Uh, what is the... Okay, let, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Uh, let's say, let's just do colors here. Okay. Got to ask, got to ask a question here. Okay. Uh, May, what color is this yeah. part? Green. This part here. What about this Green. part here? What about this part here? Also green. Well, you can't just say green. I mean, <laughs> you can't just say green, 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 right? No, it's dark I mean, green, light green. <laughs> oh, light green, dark green. Imagine if you have your apartment, right? And you want to paint your apartment. Mm -hmm. And the painter says, what color is the wall? Is it this green or this green or this green? Well, you have to know the exact type of green, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes they have a okay. number. It has a number, exactly, right? It has a number. Yeah. Okay, let me show you something else here. Uh, let me see if I can find another program for you guys. Uh, where is it here? Okay, I'm going to share another program with you guys. So I'm going to put it in the chat, maybe to help on explain uh, what we're talking about here. So look in the chat, Anu. Maybe this is for you because that's the question we're, we're dealing with. So click on that link. Okay, Anu, can you share your screen? Let's look at uh, 
uh, what yeah. you're seeing there in your screen. Yes, yes, I will share. Can you see? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, so put in it, you're putting your favorite color there. Type in the name of the color. Wow. Okay. Uh, type in again. Type in another color. Okay, type another color. Red. Programming. Okay. Now, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you see the Microsoft Word icon, right? At the bottom of your screen, bottom, you see the Microsoft Word icon at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, no. The Microsoft Word icon. Yeah. Microsoft Word, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. there. Okay. Uh. Now, you, know, you notice that it has different shades of blue. The blue is dark and it goes all the way to the top. Now, how, if we want to, how do we know what the color is? We can't just say light blue or dark blue. What is dark blue? What is light blue? Okay. All right. Um, let me put another, let me put a link in the chat for you. And then I know you click on that link and let's go there. Okay, click on that link and then let's go there and go let's go back to your screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, this is a website that you know a lot of programmers go to and use, all right? Now notice that on the right side Actually, scroll down a little bit. Scroll down a little bit. Okay. So on the left, you have pick a color. Okay. Now click on any of the colors. Okay. Now notice that when you click on the color on the right side or rather in the middle where you have selected color, you see some numbers, you know, on uh, just below the box. Yes. Zero, zero, you see that? nine, nine, FF. It has a pound sign symbol yeah. and it has 0099 FF. Now copy that, copy that and paste it in that, uh, in that color thing we're just looking at. Yeah, just highlight that, copy it. Oh, sorry, my mouse is not here a little bit. Okay, just hit my... control minus, control zero to go back to the other, to the Double current, zero? correct. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, control zero brings you back. So just highlight that. Uh, yeah. Or just double click on it to highlight it. Well, okay. Well, you're going to need the pound sign, but you can copy that and then you type the pound sign before you paste that part. So go back to that. Um, what's your color thing you were just looking at? Where is it? Where I have to paste? Oh, it's here. Okay, just no, 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 no. Go to that form you were using. You're typing in colors. The other website you went to before. Previous one. Oh, okay, okay. I have to paste this there. Favorite color. You have got favorite color. But uh, it's here. So I have to stop sharing and then I have to open it again. No, you don't have to stop sharing. Just go back to that website. But where is that website? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so type the pound sign first. Um, the pound symbol. Pound. Um, and then and then paste those numbers.
Paste, paste, paste. What are you doing, Anu? I didn't copy that. That's why I'm. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. Yes, sir. Zero zero nine nine FF. Just type it. Zero zero nine nine FF. Okay. okay, I will do. Zero zero nine nine FF. Okay, hit submit. All right. Escape. Now, now, so, so this color, right, is not just blue. It's a specific shade of blue, right? Yes. So when we talk about hexadecimal uh, values, right, hexadecimal values are made up of a combination, right, for example, of um, numbers and letters. With this example, hexadecimal colors, right? Hexadecimal colors are made up of what we call RGB, red, green, and blue. So the mixture of RGB, you get different percentages, right? Different percentages, for example, on the right side of your screen, you see lighter, darker. Yeah. So it has 100% on, right, on the right side. He has a hundred percent light, ninety five percent, ninety percent, eighty five percent, eighty percent, seventy five percent, right? The different kinds of mixtures. Okay? All right. So if that kind of gives some sense, hexadecimal colors are values that are more specific, right? Like when you talk about colors, if you have different shades, it's a mixture. And so it gives you a more specific value. Now let's see what the book says more specifically about hexadecimal. So where is it? Right here. So it is C? Well, I don't know yet. But Hexadecimal. I don't know. Yeah, let's look at what the book says. Okay, uh, let's go back all the way. It has a letter star number. You said. Okay, so. So basically, the book tells us that um, you have what you call notational systems, right? Right here. Notational systems. What is a notational system? Um, I did a Google search of notational systems. So a notational system, it says, um, the definition of a notational system is a system of using symbols, right? Symbols or signs as a form of communication. It's like short code, all right? It's like short code. Like when you go, to, like if you watch a, a TV program where there's a, in the court, right? And you see a stenog uh, stenographer. You guys know a stenographer in court? Those people that type, always type yeah, it, boom, 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 boom. Type Just keep typing, keep typing. Type, well, they're not called typists, they're called stenographers, right? So, yeah, in the courtroom, you're going to see a stenographer just typing like that, something like that, right? Constantly typing, right? They're typing every single thing that is being said. Now, they don't type it in English or in Chinese or in Arabic. They use code, right? They don't say, the man said he was not guilty. They type it in code because it's faster to type in code, right? So that's a kind of notation. So notational system is a system of using symbols or signs as a form of communication, right? Also, like uh, when you look at, I think it's the, is it in physics or in science? What's that chart? What's that chart called where you have all this different chemical, uh, like a chemical chart? Anybody remembers? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. What's it called? What's that chart called in? What's it called? You guys don't remember? I uh, uh, I don't know in English how is it. Uh, it's called. Stay in Portuguese. I'll try to translate. Tabela periódica. Periodic table. Yeah, periodic table exactly. Periodic table. Density. Yep, something like this, right? Elements. Elements, we have elements. Yes. Aha, uh -huh. so, so something like this, right? A periodic table. So all these are notations. All this yes. means something, right? Yes. Um, May, May, what does this mean here for the 2MO? I don't know. I don't know. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Ask me about code. Don't ask me about physics or mm. chemistry or anything, <laughs> right? But these are all, so these are all notations. They mean something. Right. Somebody who um, knows a lot of science can tell us it's like when you have. Um, everybody knows yes. what this is, right? O2 or H2O. Hydrogen. Yeah, Water. everybody knows that, right? So Water. those are notations. Notations, right? OK, so so a notational system, it's telling us here that hexadecimal. Hexadecimal values right here, he says a third system used in programming is called hexadecimal notational system. So it's symbols and signs to represent numbers, right? Right here he says um, in hex, uh, the numbers zero to nine are used just like in decimal. However, the letters A to F are used to represent decimal numbers. You don't have to know all those definitions. Just have an idea, right, that it's a notational system um, referred to as hex that mixes up numbers and letters, okay? Numbers and letters. So let's go back to the question. Well, let's see if there's something else about hexadecimal. Okay, so right here's an example. It says um, some programming languages will use the prefix OX in front, which is a hexadecimal. For example, you might see something like this number here, 0x16fe. Anu, can you type that in that program and see what we get? I think I have it here. Uh, let's see what it looks for. 0x16fe. 0x16. 6FE. Is it an actual number? It's not a number. I mean, is it a color? I don't think it's a color, right? Did I type it correctly? It might be a hexadecimal number, but not for colors, okay? It might be a hexadecimal number, but not for colors. Well, let me try it again, just in case. Oh. I don't think it's for colors. On your computer, right, on your computer, if you look at um, your command prompt, you might see some hexadecimal values on your computer. If you type ipconfig slash all, your map address right I think we talked about that before like you know earlier in the course your MAC address is the ID for your network interface card now if I go all the way up here you might see a few numbers that look like you might see a few numbers that look like hexadecimal numbers like uh, the IPv okay like the physical address the physical address here a combination of numbers and letters might give you an idea of what we're talking about, okay? So let's see if there's something else here. So that's all we have for hexadecimal numbers. That's an example of a hexadecimal number, right? Using a, a mixture of numbers and letters. 
So, Annie, let's go back to that question. So, yes. right here, uh, question one, which is likely to be your answer? Yeah. The hexadecimal it's, format. It's C, because it has numbers C, and right? uh, letters. Numbers and letters. Yeah. Okay. Numbers and letters. That is in hexadecimal format, where you mix up numbers and letters. Okay. Question two. May, you want to try this? Yes. Uh, which of the following turn is described concept relative to the breaking coal into smaller? Uh, repeatable. All right, so, so you see the last, this word here, repeatable. Mm -hmm. That is, when you have code that runs multiple times by itself, right? So, for example, right here in this program that we had, um, where is it? Okay. In this program, May, if I put in my if I put in the name here and I put in the year, it's only going to show you one, you know, like one face, one or the other. Are those are those kids bothering you? Tell them to go away. So when you run this code, it's going to tell you what's happening here, right? But in some code. There's some part of code that has that runs multiple times based on some certain actions, right? Runs multiple times based on some type of action. Let me see if I can show you guys that quickly here. So I'm, go I'm just going to create a simple program here, see if I can do that quickly. I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff here. Uh, and get rid of all this everything here and see if I can do that. So what do I want to do? So we're going to say we create a variable and we say age limit. Age limit is, let's just say, no, 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 let's just say num number limit, number limit. And we say 10, okay? So now we say, while normal limit uh, is less than, okay, let's do this. Normal limit, then we say uh, another variable, just to give you guys an idea of what is going on, right? So right here we say count Zero. Okay. So we're going to say while number limit is less than it's less than we say echo Okay, Alex, let me see if you can read what this pro actually before we do, let's just run it first. Let's see if it works, right? <laughs> let's see if it works. So, save. All right, so let's see if it works. I'm just going to go here. Where is it? Come on, come on, come on. It's taking a while to run. Okay, let me tr let me try this again. It's kind of hanging. So let me try that again. All 
Okay, well, while we wait for it to settle itself down, I don't know what happened there. Maybe it crashed my computer. But Alex, can you kind of tell what is supposed to happen here? Um, Alex? Uh, yes, uh, I'm just trying to figure it out. Uh, okay. Okay, Arch. You want to tell us what's happening in this program or what's supposed to happen? Um, this um, hello will be um, printed in 10 times. Like hello, hello, hello. Okay. Hello. Exactly. That's the whole idea. Uh, the tab just crashed. Okay, well, let me see. Uh, let me see if I can run that again. See what happened there with my program. Oh. Okay. I think I think I might have to adjust the program, but the whole idea is, like Arch said, right? This is what we call variables, right? This might be a very boring subject, but we're just going to talk about it. So right here, uh, you have a number 10, and here you have a number zero. So what you're saying here is um, count number limit. It says while count number limit is less than, so if zero is less than 10, it's going to print out hello, right? And it's going to continue to print out hello until this statement, right? until you meet that condition. So basically, if this works, this should print out 10 times and stop. Okay, that's what should actually happen. Okay, if we design the program correctly, that's what should happen. It should print it, and when you have a program that's gonna run multiple times like that, uh, we refer to that as a loop, right? That's a programming loop. So if you go back to the question, right, uh, let's see, repeatable sections, copy. So let's see some references there to uh, repeatable. Functions? Yeah, we just wanna go to where we can find that information. Okay, let's go to functions here. Okay. So scripting languages. Is that chain of Let's let's think of what the answer tells us to do. But okay, okay, actually, right here. If you look here, if you see here, it says functions are linear in nature, meaning they take they take input, right? Uh, they take input, process it, and then deliver the output. It's not to say they can't have looping logic in them, but rather the function starts at the beginning of the code block and finishes. So I don't think it's, let's just check something else out here. Okay, right here. I hope you guys are actually following, but you know, we'll try to, it's a very tough topic. Uh, where's my highlighter? Okay, so the two main ways that programs perform are branching and looping. So let's look at the looping part here. Okay, so an example of looping is right here. While the stop light is red, stop or else go. While the light is red, 
you keep repeating the loop until the condition changes. And once it changes, you take a different action, right? And that was the example here. If this program works, it's going to continue to print out hello, hello, hello until it gets to 10 times. It's going to continue to print out, okay? Like I said, this topic, you, you spend the whole semester in, in school learning it, right? So this might just be like driving you crazy right now. Like this is just too much. But just a few things that we need to know in there, right? All right, so, so let's see. So loops and branches, right? Okay, so let's go also here to this section. It says, you can also use looping for a counting function. For example, this while example. Um, so let's see what the correct answer will be then. Let's go back there. So what answer, what answer did you think it was? Question two? Uh, May? I think, uh, can, I do, can I say? Oh. Yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. Functions and methods. Functions and methods? Yes. Okay, let's confirm that. Functions and methods, chapter six. So question two, all right, so functions and methods are used to break code into small reusable segments, right? Functions and methods are used to break code down into small reusable um, segments, right? So those are the kind of things that you just need to remember when we're gonna do that, um, exam, you know, come TIA. You know, just some simple definitions. Okay, I need to remember functions. Functions and methods. Hexadecimal. Hexadecimal has numbers and letters. Functions have, um, functions and methods break code into small reusable segments, right? For example, you can, what you can say here, you can say that my code here, um, I might have a function here to make this work. So functions in a code or in code is what you need to break code down into reusable objects, right? Segments rather. Okay, let's see a couple more questions here. All right, Arch, you wanna try number three? Which of the following are examples of object-oriented programming languages? So let's see what uh, let's see what object oriented uh, languages are. Object oriented. All right. So right here it says a major feature of object, also known as OOP, right? Object oriented programming language such as Java, C plus plus. So Java, C++, C Sharp, Python, PHP, Perl, and Ruby is the use of objects. An object is a collection of properties and attributes, right? An object is, an, is a collection of properties and attributes. Uh, what are properties and attributes? So the program I had before Again, this might, be, this might not make much sense to you, but let me just talk about it. So, uh, what's it? Properties and attributes. For example, uh, let me just take this out. Take out all this part here. So I might have, a, I might have an attribute called style, and I, ha I might have the properties as color red. Now, in this line 15, Right in line 15, what it means is the style I'm going to apply 
to my page or to my design, right? All the text are going to become red. So this here is the attribute and here are the properties, right? So properties and um, attributes are part of coding that makes your whole code work. Like it says right here, a collection of properties and attributes. So you just need to know what are the languages, right? Java, C++, C Sharp, Python, PHP, Perl, Ruby. That's all you need to know. Okay, so back to the question. Arch, so which is it? Java and Python are object-oriented programming languages. That's it. That's all you are required to know. You don't have to understand Java, understand Python, understand SQL. Just know the sub, know the kind of languages that fall under that topic. Okay? And whenever you do go, if you want to go and study programming later, then you know the details. But now you're tr trying to help you pass an exam, which will give you a chance to move forward. So you're just trying to move forward a little bit here. Okay, one more question. Uh, this is a long one here. Which of the following statements is true? So we're going to ignore this question. Uh, let's see question five. Alex, maybe we can deal with question five. A developer needs to use a code, designate, code designation for non-English letters. Which notation system does the developer need to use? Okay, hang on. Non-English letters. So like, for example, um, Lin, do you have a keyboard that types in Chinese? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you mean use the same keyboard that can type to English and Chinese, right? Yeah. So if you want to type Chinese, do you use the yeah. same keyboard? Yes. Just, really? Just 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 change uh, like uh, uh how to say um man how to say that <laughs> sure so uh um oh. yeah so we use the same keyboard to type Chinese but but like okay so if I want to type different if I want to type jump in Chinese tell me how to do it jump in chinese what how do i type it what do tell me what to type g i a n g <laughs> what oh uh, yeah <laughs> then can type to chinese <laughs> jump yeah how do I, tell me what to type what do i click on j j i a i a n g no, I mean the characters, the Chinese characters. Don't you have like Chinese symbols for jump? Um, jump, you mean cow? Okay, don't you have Chinese characters for, for jump, Lin? But you, you need to download Download it. Oh, yeah. oh, you need to download it. Yeah, you yeah. need to download okay, now, it in, in your laptop, and then you need to use your keyboard to time it. You know. Okay, okay, I see. All right, so this is A and B and C and D. Oh, we don't use that. No. Oh, you guys don't use these characters. It's okay, totally forget different. about it. Yeah. It's difficult Forget about to tell it. you how to turn Chinese, okay? <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. So anyway, uh, so the question is about, let me see. Uh, where is it? So it's asking us about, okay, so right here, it says uh, letters with special characters, okay? So the notational system when you have letters with special characters, it says you have different types, right? 
you have the ASCII, A-S-C-I-I, ASCII. It's like ASCII, ASCII code, right? Actually, you have it. Uh, here's an example of ASCII codes, right? Here's an example of ASCII codes. For example, in HTML, if I'm if I want to create a, let's say, right here, in HTML, if I want to type like the copyright symbol, I'm gonna type and C O P. Uh, where is it? Um, ampersand and C O P Y, right? You can see that it's, it's so small, but that's the copyright symbol. Okay. That's what I just did right here. The copyright symbol. If I type, if I do that in HTML, okay, it converts all this here to that symbol there. All right. So, so you have the ASCII, right? ASCII does that. You also have, what else? You have ASCII, you have UTF-8, right? So ASCII is like the most common. ASCII uh, UTF-8, all right? American Standard Code for Information Interchange, ASCII. So, looks like the answer is pretty obvious. Alex, is it? Is that yes, the answer? Question four or question three? Question five. five. Nation for non English letters with not. Uh, looks like it would be ASCII. Unicode? But, uh, I don't. Is let's it see. a Unicode? It looks. Let's confirm. All right, so right here. Okay, so ASCII and Unicode are used. Okay, so right here. ASCII and Unicode are used for numerical representations of letters and symbols. That is something you need to remember, right? Just remember that. ASCII and Unicode are used for numerical representations when you have non-English words, okay? ASCII, uh, Unicode, all right? So this might be a very tough chapter, but we just need to remember a few things in the whole chapter. Because if you're going to actually learn this stuff, it's going to take you a while to actually learn it. But just to give you an idea, right, just an idea a little bit, that's why I showed you this code and some of the programs, right, uh, and how those programs are developed by programmers, okay? All right. Let's end it right there. Um,